Okay, stationers, uh, we're back with another experiment video here. Today we're going to look at the ultimate black box in stationers, the AC unit. This is my nemesis. I really wanted to understand how this thing worked, and I had no idea. So, I mean, everyone kind of gets the idea here. This is the input, this is the waste, and this is the output. So you put gas in here, gas comes out here, it's cooler and the excess heat goes into the waste pipe okay but really how does it work that's what we're going to answer here today so when you're trying to do black box testing where you don't really you, you can't look inside of it you have to be able to give it known inputs and then test what the output is so we built a lab on mars and this big purple tank has cold air in it minus 75 degrees that it collects from uh, active vents at night this big pig tank has hot gas in it 2200 degrees which it creates by uh, taking oxygen and hydrogen turning it into fuel burning it in a furnace filtering out just the carbon dioxide and putting it in there so once we have cold air and we have hot air then we can use a gas mixer to vary um, whatever goes in here so by changing the ratio in the gas mixer we can change what goes into this pipe on the input and we have another gas mixer over here where we can use that to choose what goes into the waste side and then we can just run the air conditioner and then we can see what happens on the output and then we have the, these vents here where we can just um, empty it all out and start again so let's see here let's do a little quick experiment i will run this just to empty everything out Good. That's empty. This side is empty. All right. Now, let's put some in the input. Now, at a 50 50 mix, I get 367 Kelvin temperature. It's hot, but it's not that hot. And let's set this one to the same thing. 50-50 mix and we've got one atmosphere of pressure in there um, at 367 as well and we have nothing in the output so then we could do a little experiment where we're just going to run this for one tick I don't know if you saw there it said 300 watts of power and then we look here and here we can see how much output it put in there what the temperature is so it actually cooled it down quite a bit uh, we can look and see how much heat it put in here and then we can do this over and over again and collect a whole bunch of data okay so now let's talk about power usage how much power does this thing use you already saw that it used 300 watts, but the amount of power it uses increases as the temperature uh, between the temperature difference between the waste and the input increases. I think most people realize that, but let's just demonstrate that. I've set this thing up in a continuous mode where we're uh, we're feeding into the input. Just slow that down a bit. And we're also feeding a continuous stream into the waste and exhausting it, and we're exhausting the output gas as well. So let's see how much power we're using here. Hydration We've got the input and the output at the same temperature, and we're running about 300 watts. Okay, so let's start increasing the input. And now we're using 2,000 watts. Basically, for every little bit that we 
increase the input, we use more power. So what temperature are we at here? Uh, we're at 611 Kelvin. So eventually we'll get to the point where it maxes out. So let's just start going up a little bit at a time. We're getting close there. It's going to max out at 6,005 watts. Yeah, there we are. We got 6,005 watts. That's basically the maximum amount of cooling it can do. Um, and at that point, it won't draw any more power. Um, but power isn't really dependent on how much work it's doing. There we go. It's actually dependent on just this temperature difference. Um, it's 300 watts plus some number times the temperature difference in Kelvin. Okay, now let's talk about how much heat this thing moves. How much cooling does it do? This air conditioning unit is actually quite efficient. A wall cooler can only move a thousand joules per tick and it uses a thousand watts. This thing, even if it's only drawing 300 watts, will always try to move 6,000 joules per tick. That's quite a lot better than a wall cooler. It will always move this amount unless it can't cool it or, or unless it cools it all the way down to whatever your set point is up here. Now it doesn't use less power if it manages to get down to your set point. Um, so really a lot of people say you should just set this thing down to your maximum uh, negative set point here, minus 200, and that's not a bad idea. That just makes sure that you're getting your full 6,000 joules per tick of cooling between your input and your output. Now the temperature of the output is going to depend on um, whether or not it can actually cool down to this set point by removing 6,000 joules of energy. And that depends on how much material it actually moves from the input to the output. And that depends on a couple of variables. And that's actually the key to understanding how this whole thing works. So the less material it moves, the more it can cool it. When we first, when I first did all of the tests, I had only this one pipe segment on the bottom and I did all my tests at 367 Kelvin and so on. And it all came out to uh, the power usage was 300 Watts plus 32.6 Watts per degree of Kelvin difference between here and here. And then, I vary the input temperature and increase the input temperature and it used it moved fewer moles of gas over and it used less energy um, per temperature difference here now the fact that it's dependent on the input temperature isn't that weird because the gas mixer works the same way if you um, set this to 50 50 it's going to take more gas from the cold side than it does uh, from the hot side in terms of moles because it kind of depends on the fact that gas expands when it heats up so that's not that surprising that as you increase the input temperature it takes less gas and since it takes less gas in terms of moles it can cool the output down by more degrees so if you're cooling from uh, you know 400 Kelvin versus 300 Kelvin, you could probably cool 25% cooler in terms of uh, how much heat you can remove, or at least how much temperature. Heat you can remove is always 6,000 joules. It's capped at that. The surprising thing was when I added this extra pipe segment here, it also reduced the amount of moles of gas that was being pulled through the unit. So the amount of material we're cooling depends on two variables. One is the input temperature. And then the other thing is the number of pipe segments or volume connected to the input port. That's a surprising result. I mean, how does this thing even, even know how many pipe segments are connected to it or what the volume is? Clearly the game has access to that, but if you were gonna make a device like this with a pipe input on it, 
in the real world, how would it even know how long the pipe was? That's kind of weird. But what it does mean is it gives us a way to control the amount of material being pumped through, and therefore we can reduce the amount that's going through, and then we can control the output temperature using this pad on the front. So if we're not getting it cold enough on the output, we just add more pipe segments on the input. More pipe segments will cause it to take fewer moles of gas, and since it's got a 6,000 joule per tick constant in, get in heat removed, it can then cool that smaller amount of gas down to a colder temperature on the output. So then the question becomes, how do we put this into use? Here we are on Venus. It's 463 degrees Celsius outside. And let's see if we can put what we've learned into use here. We've got this air conditioner hooked up so that it's just taking straight up uh, Venus air and it's wasting it out to Venus. And we've got a separate output pipe here. Um, the, uh, the interesting thing here is that because we've basically got the input and the waste at the same temperature, we expect this to draw about 300 watts. But we know that it can still cool the air it takes by 6,000 joules. That's very efficient cooling. So we don't have any, uh, uh, any gas in the output here. Let's just run this and see what it does. Okay, so we're going from uh, the outside temperature here is 737 Kelvin, and it went down to 344 Kelvin, uh, but it didn't cool all the way down to 20 degrees C. And that's because it essentially took too many moles of gas from the input to the output that the 6,000 joules per tick wasn't enough to cool it down. So if that's the case, and we're trying to cool some outside air down to 20 C, all we have to do is start adding more pipe segments. Uh, just as a, a curious point, this passive vent counts as a pipe segment. So when I did my first mathematics on this, I said, oh, I need uh, more than three, less than four. And when I set up four, it would actually went too far and so on. This is actually counts as four. One, two, three, four including the passive vent. If you want to see um, kind of proof of that, let's swap this out here. See how uh, there's a certain amount of pressure in there? Now there's more pressure. Just like when you take apart a pipe, uh, we took apart the passive vent and it actually put gas from there into the pipe. That was a bit of a surprise too. That back. Okay, so by adding an extra pipe segment, we've reduced the amount of moles that are going to get pulled in through here. We're throttling the input on this. And that would be a bit surprising to you. Oops, tank. Yeah. Okay, and that's empty. So yeah, if you had this run all through your base or you were running to the next room and then you thought, oh, I'll just run that a little bit further and suddenly your air conditioner changed, you'd be a little bit surprised by that. You're gonna blow up on me, are you? Okay. So let's run this now that we've added the extra pipe. And now we're down to 293. Now 293 Kelvin is 20 degrees C. So this is actually enough pipe to reduce the flow enough that we're actually getting down to our set point temperature. So what's it going to take? Let's empty that out again. What's it going to take if we want to go down to even colder? So minus 200 would be about 73 Kelvin. We're only going down to about 213. That's about minus 60. So what if we want to go even colder then? Let's vacuum this out. 
Uh, we gotta just keep adding segments here. Eighty-one Calvin. We're almost there. So let's add another. There you go, 73 Kelvin. So we're actually down at minus 200 C. So we're actually creating minus 200 C or 73 Kelvin gas on Venus using Venus atmosphere. And let's just check how much power we're using here. Oh, about 310 watts. Come on. It's kind of confusing because the five's in the way. There it goes, 310 watts. Huh. That's not much power. And we're creating really cold gas here. That's pretty cool. Now it's not a ton, right? We're only getting, you know, a fraction of a mole every tick. But you could run this off a solar panel. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's look at something else here. Now there's no reason that this pipe here can't just be uh, regular uninsulated pipes because we want the input and the waste at the same temperature in this setup anyways. Uh, but let's look at getting the power usage down below 310 watts. So the key to doing that is really just to, uh, to make the input and the waste at the same temperature. So let's bring the waste back into the input. It will be slightly hotter than ambient, but that doesn't matter that much and we added enough pipe segments that we can still hit our target temperature here. So that's at zero. Let's run this again. And we're getting 73 Kelvin. That's down at our set point temperature. And we're getting 300 watts instead of 310. So there you go. So yeah, we're making really cold gas from ambient temperature for 300 watts. So is it a bug? Is the AC unit just super overpowered? You be the judge. I'm going to put all this, uh, I'm going to put the math for this in the comments, and I'm also going to update the unofficial wiki to put some of the math there too, because uh, I have a lot more detail to add. But uh, this is the gist of it. This is really your most efficient setup for this unit. You can take this uh, cold gas, you can pipe it through your base, you can put radiators on it, uh, you can do whatever you like with it. You could use wall coolers to cool down to it if you wanted, but that's not very efficient either. You can run three of these for less than the power it would take for one wall cooler. 